Howdy folks, welcome back to Bullford 82. Um, a long time ago, earlier this year, I was asked to, or asked if I could make a video on converting one of these trucks uh, from fuel injection to carburetor. And I attempted to make the video, but just wasn't feeling it. So today I thought I would go ahead and remake that video and explain to you um, what I did to make my carburetor setup work, um, what I got rid of as far as the EFI stuff goes, what I retained, what wires I needed, um, so on and so forth. Um, so right now this thing, I have it set up to where it you know, starts like a regular uh, carbureted vehicle. Uh, this one you just pump the gas once, turn the key, she lights off. Um, pretty simple is what I what I went for um, no crazy switches nothing nothing too crazy just kept it simple and that's what I wanted to do with this truck my original reason for going to a carburetor on this was one I wanted to be able to tune it uh, and I want to play with this engine at some point uh, probably next year I think I want to do some stuff to it uh, probably before we put the five-speed manual transmission in um, but my original problem with the fuel injection is kind of the main reason why I swapped it to a carburetor. Um, the fuel injection wasn't, it was not working right. And later I found out why, and it was really because of a bad high pressure fuel pump uh, along the frame rail over here. It was kind of a bad misdiagnosis on my point, on my part. Um, however, I've still been pretty happy with the carburetor setup, so. It wasn't really a total loss. Um, if it was something I was trying to keep it cheap and just fix the problem, I probably wouldn't be driving this right now. I probably would have just shipped it. Yeah, let's pop the hood and we'll do some chatting and I'll kind of show you what I've done. First of all, I bought this truck from a pick and pull a junkyard. I walked in there one day and saw this thing sitting out there that they just brought in. Kikiri! Uh oh, the cat wants to know what I'm doing. What? Okay, don't show the world your butt, okay? This is my uh, five-year-old female, Soul. Uh, anyways, I had bought this truck from the junkyard and I could not pass it up because it had, um, it had a 302 in it, everything was here. Um, and I was initially attracted to the fuel injection um, uh, setup. And uh, well, it was just in a really good shape. Uh, the cab has got a few dings and stuff on the outside, but there's no absolutely no rust. It had brand new brakes and all kinds of stuff done to the engine. It's got brand new cylinder heads, new head gaskets, a water pump. I mean, this thing had the works. It's got a brand new radiator. Uh, so somebody was definitely chasing the problem uh, that this was having, and it was having a, a starting issue, like especially when it's hot. And with the lack of fuel pressure, it wasn't atomizing the fuel properly, so that's why it was having uh, an issue starting. So anyways, um, when I decided to do the carburetor setup, um, I wanted to just completely get rid of the EFI stuff, and got, get rid of all the vacuum hoses, and just really clean this thing up. So let me go over what I've done here. Um, I have kept the electric fuel pump set up in this, although my high pressure fuel pump uh, is now a Edelbrock 7 PSI fuel pump that feeds the carburetor on this. Uh, it still uses the intake fuel pumps. I'm using those, or I, I have retained the intake fuel pumps uh, so that I have a lift pump to go to my um, main pump on the frame. And the whole idea of keeping the fuel pumps, electric fuel pumps, is <laughs> this cat. The whole idea of keeping the fuel pumps was for easy starting. Uh, I don't want to have, and converting this to a mechanical fuel pump would have been more work than I wanted to uh, deal with. It's just easier to mount a new fuel pump and uh, plumb it in and call it a day. Let me get you out the stand and I'll, I'll just kind of show you some stuff. The cat stole the show. As you can tell, I got a carburetor, carburetor on it. 
This is an Edelbrock AVS-2. Woman, you're killing me. I've been really happy with this carburetor, actually. Um, haven't had any issues with it. Um, it's been a really good carburetor. This thing runs... You would almost think it's fuel injected. It's pretty crazy how well this thing runs with this carburetor. This engine itself is in really good shape. Um, it was fairly, you know, taken care of. The transmission's a different story. So here's what I did to convert this over to a carburetor. Um, what I did is just completely removed all the fuel injection stuff, the intake, uh, pretty much all the wiring harnesses. Um, what I did for this harness here, I retained, oh, let's see, what color wire are we? I forget what the color wire it is. I think it's the uh, red with the white stripe. And then, and then this white with a red or pink stripe. I think I kept those two. That's for water temperature is right here and then the other one is for the oil pressure center down there I kept those two wires out of the big harness that was right here and so this will let my factory gauges work um, and then uh, I had a problem with trying to find the main plug for the fuel pumps I think it's actually this one right here I need to test it when I turn the key on to see if it gets power, if it does, this would probably be the actual plug for the fuel pumps. But what I ended up doing is, with this relay here, I wired in a trigger wire uh, that goes to this white with blue, I believe it is. That is a key on, engine on. Um, and that triggers the relay, and then the relay feeds power to the fuel pump down here and that's spliced in it goes back into the cab and feeds the intake uh, pumps as well so that runs the electric fuel pumps uh, some people end up going to the mechanical fuel pump so you may not even do any of that but that's what I did for the fuel pumps and then you can just barely see my little Brock pump down there probably put about two or three thousand miles on that it's been working pretty good now for the ignition I'm running a uh, really cheap, uh, when I get this off of eBay, $60 GM, GM and Ford HEI distributor. This has actually been a good distributor. Uh, I was kind of talking crap about it in a, another video. I thought it was giving me problems. Uh, I thought this was giving me problems, but that's not the case. It was, uh, I actually had water in my fuel, believe it or not. So it's been a pretty good distributor. I've been really happy with it. So to power this, uh, what I did is I added another relay. Uh, this relay gets, uh, not this relay, this relay right here is my, for my fuel pump. This one here uh, gets turned on by one of the wires that would turn on your alternator. Um, so that turns on the relay here, and this gets full power from the battery, and then powers this, and then the other wire that you'll want out of your harness here is this green with a do uh, dotted line. That one there, you can plug into the tack on this and you're good to go. You know, I'm about ready to do a cat delete on this truck. Get it? That's pretty much how this is set up. Uh, oh, this choke here gets power from the same uh, source as the distributor. I haven't had any problems doing it that way. I don't think this draws a whole lot of power anyway, so um, that's worked out pretty good. The other thing out of the engine harness, when you strip all that stuff back, this wire will be in there too. This is for the AC. I use that to control my other relay, which runs an electric fan. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't video pulling all the wiring and all that stuff out because I was in a groove. Um, that plug back there, that will have an end, the whole engine harness will be going through there and then it'll go into the cab. Um, I removed the computer, its bracket, 
all that fun stuff. And you see my cruise control module hanging down because I don't have a bracket no more. I'm actually gonna remove this. But, let's see. There was some wires, I think, tied up in here. I kinda snipped on those and got rid of all that. So, don't bite me. So pretty much anything that attaches to that computer you can you can yank out and, and get rid of. But yeah, that's actually pretty simple when you get down to it. You can just whatever attaches to the computer and old fuel injection stuff, you just completely gut it. Keep your three wires, your green with the dot, the white and red, and then the red and white, keep those so your gauges will work. Um, this has a, well not factory to this, but a factory uh, tachometer I swapped in. So I have all that working. Um, and then a, just regular fuel line. That'll rock fuel filter before the carb. Fuel pump has a filter in front of it. We've got our fuel pump here. I did get rid of the return line completely. So we come down here, fuel line, and then I just attached my feed line to the top here. This is your feed. And then this is the return. I got rid of that. So yeah, it is nice having the um, electric fuel pumps in this because, like I said, you know, I just turn the key, let her pump up, and and then it, you know, it just, it starts. <laughs> Uh, especially sometimes I let this sit for a while and uh, it's nice to be able to prime it before you start cranking it, it saves on your battery and you might notice that hey this truck has two four-wheel drive axles but has a two-wheel drive transmission uh, I'm gonna be doing a five-speed swap on this Do you like how I rigged this up I only zip tied this on here because I needed it temporarily until I put the five-speed in um, yeah, <laughs> but I have videos on uh, putting the intake manifold in and um, and the whole carburetor set up and all that stuff. So I'll add some cards into this video so you can see uh, those videos. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's really pretty simple. This thing has been a, a reliable uh, uh, truck with uh, this carburetor set up. Air conditioning even works. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them down below and I'll try and get to them when I can. And we gotta do a five speed swap on this and that'll also finish up the four wheel drive swap that I've been doing. Um, I have a five speed M5OD ready to go for it, all rebuilt. Um, I still have to put together a transfer case and I need to get parts to make one except the uh, speedo cable because I want to retain my factory speedometer and um, I really don't want to put in a, an electronic setup. I have some future plans for this for next year. Um, you know one will be the, four, the five speed swap but secondly I think I want to pull this engine out and I want to put shorty headers on it completely get rid of the catalytic converters um, Oh, there was something else I want to do. I want to put a cam in it too. Um, just a slight upgrade from stock. Because this has the EFI cam in it and I would like to get something a little bit nicer in it. So this is my 85 that I rescued from the junkyard. Still got to put my badges on and change the mirrors to something that's a little more acceptable. the interior though stock interior I haven't changed anything on it still got the factory dash which is really only got a couple of cracks in it here and there original carpet yep I drive it I mean I use it and I'm hauling junk and been hauling firewood with it and it's been a nice truck I haven't started it in a while and it is kind of cold out let's see if it'll let's see if she'll fire up so you usually just give her one one, two. I got a squeaky alternator belt.
This thing used to have a tick. It doesn't tick anymore. Interesting, huh? My idol is set a little high because of the uh, having the working air conditioning. I don't have a step up motor for it. I got the TTB axles from an 89 Bronco. Same with the rear, it's a 8.8 .8 from a Bronco. I got the whole set for 175 bucks. And uh, yeah, I don't know, at some point when I'm done building this truck, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I may um, eventually let it go. Um, I'm not really too sure on that because I, I would like to get another project truck. But I have a feeling I'm probably gonna keep this one just because of the money I put into it and eventually I'm gonna put new tires on it and I'll have the five speed in there. AC works. Um, I think the only thing that doesn't work on this truck is the cruise control, but I've deleted the cruise control because exhaust for it and Summit Racing's got a couple of nice exhaust kits for these that are fairly cheap. I think the one I'm looking at is a dual exit right here. Not too sure what I'm gonna do. But yeah, I do like this truck. This 302 hauling a load of firewood gets 13 miles to the gallon with this carburetor. Um, when I had this fuel injected, and with that fuel pump being weird, uh, it got like nine unloaded. It was pretty ridiculous. So yeah. All right guys, that's it for this video. I'll catch you guys later.